Well, of course, there is Michael. Uh, Mark passed away now. Uh, Cherie. And then our grandchildren, um, Ryan Eigenman. Then there is Jeff Eigenman. Gabby Eigenman. And then there is Maxine Eigenman. And Andy Eigenman. Sid Lucero. Oh, Sid like, Lucero, yeah. Actually, he, yeah. He, he, uh, he's actually Timmy Eigenman. Because his mother, actually, being Pimentel, played the leading lady of his dad at the time. That was the name of the character he played in Batch 81. Mr. Lucero, you're <laughs> late again. What is the excuse this time? So I guess that's why he chose Sid Lucero to yeah. be his screen name. <laughs> I met Eddie when I was asked to, uh, to sign up for premiere pro uh, productions after I did my, in uh, my first movie, which was Santa Rita de Casia. And Santa Rita de Casia actually was a contest uh, uh, sponsored by St. Rita's College. And I was going to school. I was going to Assumption College at that time. I was an intern, and so there was a, a cousin of mine who was going to school in St. Rita's College, and so they had these contests, like I said, and I was chosen to play the role, and so a year after the movie was shown, during the filming of this movie, we were uh, dramatizing it over the radio, and Eddie, at that time, was singing at the Clover Theater, correct? Mm -hmm. I saw him there. My mother told me at one point, at one time, when she had come with me, and she said that the young man who's singing wants to have a picture. And I said, <laughs> who is that man? And he says, well, according to them, he's known as the Elvis Presley of the Philippines. When Love Me Tender was shown, I went and I became a fan. I started dancing in the theater, and I, when, I, after I, when I went home, I started to see how I can comb my hair. I had a lot of hair then. <laughs> and I started putting a lot of pomade, tried to comb it, shave my sideburns to make it grow. And I started singing Elvis Presley, and we formed a band called our stop the Trippers because we would always go on a trip to, what, fiestas, funerals, and things like that. Now, Dona Cesar, had, in the meantime, opened at the Manila Grand Opera House, and his assistant went and said, you know, we were ahead. Dona Cesare is offering you this and this and that with a star billing. And since we already, I already separated with, my, separated with my group, I sang with another group at Manila Grand Opera House called the Modern Trios. So I went to Manila Grand Opera House. About eight months after I was introduced at Clover, that is when one of the members of Modern Trio introduced me to Doña Adela Santiago and I was given a one-year contract and I was introduced in the movie Shirley My Dear. Give me the right to make you So then I finished my movie, Saint Rita, Santa Rita de Casia, and then I was all, a year after, after I graduated from high school, I was offered a two-year contract by Premier Productions. The movie, Santa Rita, was released through Premier. And so then, when I went with my mom to sign the contract, and I saw Eddie there, because at this point, I think he had already done two of his movies, which were Singing Idol and... Uh, Shirley, My Darling, and Singing Idol. Right. Awit uh, Kita, of course, is uh, a nice one. It was directed by Jerry DeLeon, a very good director. She was my leading lady. It was a musical drama. And uh, that is when we fell in love. 
So anyway, I so hope then, you liked Eddie Mesa, not Elvis. Yeah. Well, like, obviously, <laughs> it was obvious, right? <laughs> so finally, after that, okay, so we got married, and uh, we had our children. Actually, the Eigen months was always full of of drama, and and um, the Eigenman home was full of glitz, and 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 um, like we're always on the zone. I grew up having Fernando Po Jr. at home, Susan Roses, Bob Soler. And Shirley Garospe and Barbara Perez, who is my Nina. These were the big stars of the 60s. And these were my parents' friends. They had big parties sa bahay. So nung maliit pa lang kami, may mga pictures kami ng pamilya, kami magkakapatid, naka-costume. Ako yung nakatutu, sila yung naka-clown outfit. We were always dressed to perform. So like I said, that was my reality. I would say that that was the glory days of Philippine cinema because if you're under contract, then um, work is much better. You're called to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning, do your makeup, 9 o'clock, camera starts rolling, and then at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, you're done. Uh, if you're going to be working at night, staying overnight, you don't work before and you don't work the day after. So it's really nice and every Friday is a family day. Fans Fancy. would go in, uh, reporters would come in, and it is our pay payday <laughs> every Friday. So everybody's there in the studio. And then I left for the States 1972, and I stayed there until 77. As everybody knows, my mom and my dad, they separated for 16 years. They're love stories for the books. And so when my dad came back, my dad left, I was like six years old. And there was really not much... Um, uh, communication between my dad and I. So I practically grew up with my mom in the world of, of the, the film industry that she had also been a part of. So that has become my world, aside from school, of course. And when that happened, I started questioning about what life is about. Although my family was happy with my success, I was not really happy, I was empty. And so after we got separated, I said, what is life about? And I started asking and looking for questions through religion. Alcohol was not enough. I became addicted to drugs to the point that I want to just end my life, but I was afraid where, I, where I'm going. And then my dad came back, 1977, and he performed a whole long series of shows in Eduardo's, which turned out to be a sold out show every night for maybe like 26 nights, because that was the same year that Elvis Presley had passed away. When I'd have a chance, I'd sneak in backstage and watch and in between uh, school. Then one time, Dad asked me to sing with him. Nung panahon na yon, Vic De Rosario was watching in the audience, and that's when my dad and Vic talked about signing me up for a single. Oh, I hated him. When he came back, I hated him. I didn't want to have anything to do with him. I kind of blamed him for a lot of things that had happened. But then I was also searching, and uh, I was with my children, and th this was the time in my life when it was not, when they were getting older, they were going through their own experiences, and me along with just handling it all by myself, by myself, I say, because a lot of what was going on in my personal life was affecting them. When I started in 1973 until 1979, it was merely a game for me. Uh, laru laru lang, I would guest on TV, kanta kanta, tini bopper nga, love team, love team, ganun ganun. At that time, my dad would always bring us with him when he'd take his vocalization with Al Dabalim. My dad taught us a lot. We'd sing a lot at home. My dad always um, would play guitar, and my brothers and I would, would sing with my dad. And that's about all the training I got. Um, there was not much training for acting, really, in the time when I was growing up. Uh, so training wasn't really exactly something that we went through, except for dance. I did take dance. I went to dance school, which I also love very much. 
I started with Julie Borromeo. I started jazz. And I'm grateful that I did that for many years because that kind of helped my instrument and become more aware of my body and how I can move. So, and giving me that poise for later on, which I would rely on as the contrabida, <laughs> as antagonist. I think it was then at the time when Mother Lily talked to my mom and Douglas Quijano was at that time managing my brothers, the late Douglas Quijano. My brothers at that time were very young. At 17, they were fathers. So my mom had no choice but to force them to work and get them into the business. Ganun lang talaga. Although, luckily, being born into that industry and the fact that my, my brothers loved doing what they were doing, it's like fate and destiny just brought us there. Um, so because of that, lagi na lang ako nasa saling pusa. So ako yung biglang nasabak dahil nung panahon na yon, mother was uh, developing female actresses. So at that time, Alma Moreno was the biggest star. So they needed a younger sister for her. So at the very first movie I did, in fact, was with Charito Solis, where I was introduced in Beer House, directed by Elwood Perez. And this was a trilogy of sorts, and my story was under Elwood Perez's direction. So I was called the, the problem child of Tinseltown. So basically, they exploited my entire f personal life. Back at that film right now, I think it was the most groundbreaking millennial type of a movie at that time that broke the boundaries for young women who at that time were trying to find their own identity. And looking back now, I'm so happy that I did that role and I was given that opportunity to become like the, the poster child for all the young kids who wanted to create their own identity. So I look back and say, no, I'm not the problem child. I'm the child. They're the problem. <laughs> Naging bingi na ako. Naging manhid. Katulad mo. Manhid. Pero pinagbigyan pa rin kita. That time was uh, the period when we were called the regal babies of the bold wagon. Kasabay ko nun sila. Yan, sila Lorna, sila Rio. I came after Gina. Then I sunod-sunod yan. Then Maricel, then Dina. Pinaka-bold ko nun was holding myself like this in front of the camera and just showing my back. Or having a fetal position because I was going through difficulty as a, as a child, struggling with her teenage issues. You know, for whatever it is, growing up with my mom as an actress, with her strength, it must have been tough as a mother as well how to do her protection, but she gave us a lot of uh, leeway to, to grow and learn on our own. And with her backing, none of these incidents have been told to my dad, nor have, was he aware that we were doing such projects. My dad at that time um, went into a recluse and walked into the world of evangelism and lived a life of uh, super simplicity. The only superstar in this room this morning is the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody else. Elwood, Elwood, he's, he taught me a lot. And the one thing about Elwood is that he has this amazing visions of many things, and he, 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 he's so much energy that he brings that light into the, into the scene, into the set. The one thing about him is that he always made his women actors feel beautiful. Sa kanya ko talaga natunan yung ano, feel beautiful before, before he says action. Okay, camera, sound, wet your lips, feel beautiful, action. And that's his famous line, feel beautiful, feel beautiful before the action. And there was care along with it. Sometimes it's very, he can be rough, he can be very direct with his ways, but there was a lot of care. I think Elwood's underrated kasi magaling siyang director eh. But he would do a lot of commercial films during that time. Um, and the Borchada was sort of an exploitation film. So after the Problem Child era and all the campy films I did also, um, being part of my contract, Bernal took me 
under his fold. And I think this was a big turning point as an actor, because to him and from him, I learned a lot about acting, real art of the craft of acting. So I started doing Girlfriend with him, Matranilio and Altantai. It was a big flop in the box office because I played the factory worker in the Atabubaga. It was meant for Nora or Nora, I think. Yes, and then I did Ito Bang Ating Mga Anak. At that time, Peke was working with him as a production designer. So with Peke's eccentric visions and very um, avant-garde style and combining Bernal's uh, acting, uh, directing, I was able to portray fantastic, interesting roles. So Ito Bang Ating Mga Anak and then Manila by Night. I played Kano, and I'll never forget that role. And I think it was partly created by Peke. And I know that they really took uh, painstaking time so creating my character in all its details, from what to wear, from the dirt on my nails, the voice, the name. I played a drug pusher. It was amazingly fun to do this. At that time, I was a teenager. I was 19, so I could go even younger maybe 17, I could go into the dark side of, of Manila and, and learn all about the red light district at that time. So I had a scene in the Cariton and at that time it was already pretty risky to do a kissing scene with the girl and, and caress her breasts. And yeah, we were, were friends, me and Oji Rio. She's the sweetest actress, and so it was pretty good. I mean, what? Rio Loxin, no less. She was a gorgeous woman until, uh, until now. With Derek Lino Naman, it was always a, a dream to be directed by him. I remember, I think there was a point in, in in my career that he didn't like me. Kasi yung ex-wife ko, baby niya eh. Eh, syempre, yung relationship namin ng ex-wife ko was an open book. My reputation then was not favorable. So, galit siya sa akin. But, when he got me for anong kulay ng mukha ng Diyos, na-shock talaga ako. What? What kinukuha ako ni Lino Broca? Fidel, hanggang ngayon ba naman nagsiselos ka pa? Anak mo dinadala ko. Ikaw lang ka isa isang lalaking kinasipin ko. Asawa kita. Asawa mo ko. O paano pa ako makakatiyak sa kalagayan ko to? Mabuti pa patayin na nila ako bukas eh. Ngayon, bago ko pa masilip ang pagbumuka ng batang yan. Nawalan ka na ba talaga ng tiwala sa akin? Kung sa Diyos nga, naubos ang tiwala ako sa'yo pa kaya? And of course, I jumped at that chance. And I really did my best. I won an award for that film. And I'll never forget. Because my first movie with Lino Broca, he gave me an award. He's the only director who told me, on this line, don't blink. On this line, look up. On this line, I want your tear to fall. Ako... I was very, very instinctive eh, before I studied, before I understood what the craft was. So I would rely on my instinct most of the time. And I remember a scene wherein he already told me what I was supposed to do. But I still closed my eyes, not on the line where he wanted. And he was side coaching. Don't close your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Yung ganon, ganon siya ka, ka precise. Then from then, I went into Champoy, which is a comedy show. And that's when Peck and I worked a lot together. And at that time, with Subas and Noel. 
Again, that was another milestone in my life as a person and an actor because I was with a wonderful group of amazing creative geniuses with Mitch and Desi, and I learned again from them, Ronnie Lazaro. It was this time when Becky wrote Otto. And he comes to me and says, Sheree, you're in love again. <laughs> you better assure me you're not going to misbehave because I specifically wrote training for you. I promise back I won't, I won't, I won't. Okay, so that's that history. <laughs> of course, I miss me one day. <laughs> The opening of Oro was a whole big 360 degree one shot of the entire fiesta establishing the grandeur of the Oro era and the cast and characters that went with it all in one shot. It was a dance. I remember Ronnie going up to the, from the steps down, from down up following Joel and then riding in on his wheelchair. <laughs> Improvise. There was no dolly tracks. He rode on a wheelchair to shoot that entire scene. How that was set up, we were called two days prior or more to a gymnasium. All the actors sat in front of Peke and said, you are now going to watch so how it's the choreography. Everybody represented us, there were stand-ins. Each of them had numbers. Each of us had been assigned a number to watch the characters portray our roles and what we'd do. So pagdating namin sa set, we already knew what to do. <laughs> And of course, Joel was a cutie pie and already then was with Christy, his present wife until this day. They were young, girlfriend, boyfriend. And it was always fun because him being from Negros and from there, he made us all feel. But you know what? There was no small game, small talk. It was really serious stuff. Walang delicadeza. Hindi na binigyan ng importansya ang karangalan ng pamilya. Naging hayop ng lahat sa atin. Ang digmang ito. Ginawang hayop tayong lahat natin. Peke was close to my sister Sherry because of Champui. And I've always, always wanted to work with him. And when I was offered the role of Unfaithful Wife, I grabbed the opportunity to accept. In fact, Unfaithful Wife, for me personally, is still my favorite movie to date. It's number one on my list. Fidel, mahirap yung pinagagawa mo sa akin. Para kang nangungutang ng pera na ayaw mong sabihin kung magkano'ng inuutang mo. Crispin. Ang hinuutang ko sa'yo ang buhay ko.
Well, I've won a few Best Actor awards for it. Um, Joel Torre became a close, close friend. Um, in fact, because of that film, I got him to become Ninong of one of my sons. Um, that was the first film I did wherein I really, really understood my character because we did workshops before shooting. And once we started shooting, I was really, really into it. Um, no trace of Michael whatsoever. It was just all Crispin, the, the character I portrayed. Tito Maning, I, I grew up with. I, my mom and him worked a lot together. They became close friends outside of shooting and outside of the film set. He would come to the house, mommy would go to his house. So, to me, it was family. Hindi nakakasawang pagkanta. At lalong hindi nakakasawang liwanag. I tell you, if only you could feel how it is to be up there. On center stage. Under the lights. <laughs> Nico, maraming dugo at pawis ang pinuhunan ko para marating ko ginaroroonan ko ngayon. Hindi ako dapat bumaba at mawala. Kailangan pa ako na madla. There will never be another Lavinia Arguelles. We were sitting and it was actually a scene that was being directed by Leroy. It wasn't at that time Tito Manning. It must have been written and I know it was written in a different way. We were waiting for the lights to be set and I maintained the same story and Tommy and Biwal and I were jamming. In fact, next to us was Vicky Suba and uh, then the late Jay Lagan. And, but it was really between me and Tommy and Tommy was uh, being a theater man. He continues to create lines that are catchy up until this day. And I remember it said, uh, you're nothing but a good imitator. That was the line in the script. So we were just playing. And at the moment, Tommy threw out the word copycat. I said, I like that. That's catchy. So we we're just waiting for the lights. And he came up, and I came up with a trying hard. And somehow it just gelled. And so we asked directly, right? But the name is a bit, going to go Okay. So that's how it came about. You'll never make it. You're nothing but a second-rate, trying hard, copycat. Larry, Libby, Taina. When Paradise Inn came, I've never met Celso Ad Castillo. I just hear things about him, a lot of stories about him, about his reputation, but I've never had any bitter experience with him. It was such a joy. That was our second film together. The first was Perfume Garden. That was more nerve-wracking because Paradise in Medio relaxed na because we became close friends. Pero when Perfume Garden was offered to me, my, I remember my first shooting day. Sobrang nervous ko. I felt I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I felt that I wasn't giving what he was asking for. But that's how Celso is. Eh? He, he let you discover for yourself. He'll just give you a clear picture of how your character should be. Loris and I got close when Johnny Delgado introduced the acting workshop, the Actress Guild, uh, I joined that. I learned a lot in that workshop. That's when I learned how to merge my instinct with the technique, kumbaga yung craft, dun ko natutunan. And it was easy to work with Loris because that time, the workshoppers already had a certain 
language. Kumbaga, under the Eric Morris technique, all the actors and directors who took that workshop nagkakaintindihan. Oh my God, Mike, he was my biggest crush at that time. Something about him is so mysterious. It takes time to make a good film. It takes a long time. And I understand when you're rushed, then it gets frustrating for the likes of Mike De Leon. So the, the day after we woke up to do the scene, and I'm doing my makeup at 7 a.m., I'm hearing already upstairs, blah, 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 things were being moved around, what's going on? And I'm hearing him shouting and uh, angry. And so I go up, I try to ease everything, be the peacemaker. Hey, Mike, what's up? Did you see how awful that I changed? I had to change everything. He, he has his own production design eye. So everything that was set up for that scene was changed. He has his own idea of what he wants to see, so he wanted it very bare. I always say television is my bread and butter. Theater is for my soul. So at least I, I do at least one a year. I'd like to. And then yung indie, I'd like to do more indies because that would also feed my soul. Had na water down in bill nyo. Okay lang ba yun? Hindi ka pwedeng hindi magbibigay. Kung gusto mo makuha ang gusto mo. Compromise is the key. Yan ang dapat mong matutunan. When you're starting out, you should sway like bamboo. Now, when you're at the top, then you can be as stiff and rigid like a flagpole. On the job was considered indie. Uh, pag indie kasi, pag gusto ko, tatanggapin ko. Eh. It was so funny nga, because when they sent me the script, they didn't tell me what character. I didn't know what role. So I was reading the whole thing. While reading, I was guessing and thinking in my mind, sino kaya ako dito? <laughs> ako ba si Tatang? Ako ba yung polis? Hmm, politician? Kung, hmm? Hindi yata, ito sana hindi yun. <laughs> Kasi, di ba, you, you, you want to do something na different eh. So when I asked, hindi ako si Tatang, hindi ako yung polis, ako yung politician. <laughs> so parang, oh, Okay lang, pero sige, I did it kasi it was a chance to work with Eric Mati again after a long, long, long time. Ba't niyo siya pinuprotektahan? Pwede ko siya arrestuin ngayon din. I was a client of his once. Maybe twice. Kapag hinuli mo siya, it will be the end of me. And you. It came about when Peke approached me and said, Shri, FDCP is coming up with a uh, festival for sampung director ng sining, the top iconic uh, icons, icon directors. And I had just met him in Bacol and prior to that, and I shared with him a real life story about me and my fears of losing my voice because I couldn't sing anymore because I love to sing. Because somehow I had this, I, have acqu I had acquired rankis edema and I was going to go for surgery. And I suppose when this offer of FDCP came about, he came and said, Shiri, I want to do that story. It's about an opera singer who lost her voice. Wow, so fantastic. I would love to. Yeah, he's quieter. He's simpler. Of course, with Laurie by his side now, Laurie does all the physical strenuous, but there's always heart. And then Sonata is a lot, a lot of heart. That was the last, one of the last films that I was able to do with my late brother, Mark. 
The combination of actors at that time, we were, again, very comfortable with each other. Mark, Jaime Fabregas, Epi, myself, Fides played our mother, and Tetschik Bayani. The process was just so invigorating. It was just so... And the script written, Gabby is an actor's coach. And then you realize, let her go. So he knows very well how to trigger our real insides towards the script. My brother Ralph played an alcoholic in that movie, so it was pretty uh, sensitive and close to home. So I think my best scenes in that film were the ones I did with Ralph. Oh yeah, for your collection. Mo na pakita sa iba ha, baka sabi nila. Everything same. Exactly. Come on, Sandra. I'm your poor twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think most of my best scenes in my entire career, I have done the best with Ralph. That made a big mark, that scene when I had telling him, you're an alcoholic, you can't even... That was painful. What are you talking about, you know? What? You know it can't go to you. Uh, and why not? Oh, look at you. What? You can't even have breakfast without a drink. Stop. You can't manage the farm. You, how could you manage mom's inheritance? Don't start with me. Don't start with but me. You're an alcoholic. That's the truth. Don't. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Don't ever say. Don't ever say that. I am. I am. I manage. What? What did you manage? Well, if that's so, bakit hindi nang kaya ikaw? In fact, Gabby came to me and whispered, I mean, don't, don't change the word drinking. Just tell him he's an alcoholic. Like, surprise him with the word. Because Gabby's a good friend. He knows our inner struggles and intricacies. And that, that created magic between him and I. In fact, I remember after we did the scene, we looked at each other and he gave, us, gave me a, bump, a fist bump and I just made an Indian dance. Like that. And then Jaime and Effie were just watching. And he go, wala pa si Michael niya, na? <laughs> I was proud, proud. One proud moment. Sandra? Sandra! Ralph you is know, a big I was, loss. I was just us. reading yeah. a post of uh, his daughter Maxine yeah. on the Facebook, and uh, she said that he, his dad has always guided him, he just thanking to. him because of her success, involvement in show business. And one of the things that, he's, that she said is that his, her, dad. her dad told her that um, love your work because it will love you back. He was very afraid of Amok, but he shared a lot of the scary incidents in that film, but he was excited at the same time to deliver his part. I heard it was quite a very risky role, quite a brave role. Tagalog Films Productions. Sal Di Mortis, Starring Rogelio Vasquez. Upcoming star. Watch out. Miss X, I remember, he was happy to go to Amsterdam with Miss Vilma. Um, he was excited about our projects, our TV show, the TV series we did with Peke, Cebu. Many of them are, I think, if not all of them, he has always been proud of. I think there's one that's maybe not, 
that he'd be very ashamed to do <laughs> or, or <laughs> wish that he never did. But most of the time, he was very passionate in telling stories about them. Pindutin mo! Pindutin mo! I don't know if they were his favorites, but he gave them equal attention. I would go to his house, and his scripts were very much marked. And it's not only film, it's also his soaps. And I even said, wow, Ralph, really? I don't even read my script, because when I get to the set, I'll get back to it. Yeah, 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 it's the pilot. I just have to make sure. He's very, very, very professional. Ten times more than I. He puts in his own costumes, whether they ask him to bring it or not. He just wants to make sure he has something on standby. He prepares them himself. Um, yeah, he's one actor that's very hard to do. He's a hard act to follow. Hi, good morning. Palabas ba kayo ng village? Hindi kasi kami pwedeng mag-commute. Itong kasi si Sami, kailangan kong dalhin ng hospital. At that point, I, I had heard about indie films with, through Mark. Because Mark was one of those who first told us what indie, what, about indie films. And I would often say, what are indie films, no? So then later on, I started hearing more about these indie films and how they were sent to festivals and how they were all, had all these directors who were supposed to be really so artistic in their ways and, and putting up really stories that were really of, uh, of what, how I say, uh, Reality art. and yeah. art, you know. I said, how no formula for box, box office, office but, no, uh, yeah, whatever. I said, artful. how fantastic. That means that the Philippines is really moving on as far as these things are, uh, these movies, showbiz is concerned. So then when that thing was offered, I was curious, but then I was also worried about myself because I don't, I could, I didn't know whether I could still remember things, you know, because like sometimes. Your lines, you mean? My lines. Tung <laughs> blue. <laughs> Tandaan mo, ah, para sa high blood pressure mo yan. Ito namang pink, pag hindi ka makatulog, iinom ka nito. Kung masakit ang ulo mo naman, ha? Ito, isa nito. Pag tinamaan ka ng gout, ito. Uminom ka ng isa nitong white, isa nito, at dalawa nito. We've done films together, we've done TV together. Um, it's challenging. Kasi magaling sila eh. Magaling sila. So kailangan galingan mo rin. We don't see each other as brother and sister when we're on the set. We respect each other as actors. Brothers and sisters happen when we're in the house. But when we're working and we're, when we're on the set, we're all actors. It's easy and yet at the same time hard working with family. It's a challenge, but at the end of the day, you go home with a full heart. Bianca, my daughter, is now an actor. Um, I would like to say even more uh, legitimized actor having graduated, well, soon to graduate in NYU Tisch. That was really a choice that she wanted. She wanted to do major in theater arts. At first, I have to tell you, I told her, are you sure, Bianca, this is something that's so difficult, especially in New York, where things, actors are really amazing and competitive. I mean, it'll be chronic unemployment. I think it was more like protecting my heart as a mother than it is for her. She did come and make a movie one time recently with uh, an international group of producers and director called Sensitive in Love. So that was a good exercise for her and in initiating her into making and what it's like to make films. My son, well, he's still in school. My oldest is a sound engineer exposed to music. So it's again still within the work of creativity. This third generation of Eigenmans, they're actors to watch out for. I 
guys, this is our legacy. This is our legacy. This is our our contribution to, to Philippine cinema. Actors who are really, really serious with their craft. Uh, actors who are not here just to make money. Actors who are here not because they want to be glamorous, but actors in the true sense of the word. I just know I think I will still continue to create in a different arena aside from acting. I would like to create stories to tell. Maybe I will want to begin to write. I'll probably get nervous. Ang kaiksena ko si Rosemary Hill, si Sherry oh. Hill, at saka si Michael De Mesa, <laughs> at si Sid Lucero, <laughs> and the Eigenmans. Because there's a lot of Taglish. They're good. No, Taglish, they're Taglish, right? Yeah. They're really well accomplished actors kasi. You know, it's still, it's still a blessing. Yeah. You should be happy that mm -hmm. we're still, I'm still happy. I'm standing on my feet being able to do something like that, if it makes people happy. I just wish sometimes that they won't have us mestizos doing the bad roles all the time, no? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah.